Hi, my name's Gabriel Gauchi Marchant. I'm the, uh, currently the KRA Stable Management Consultant. Uh, my company is Equine Goals and Dreams Australia. I'm a member of the International Federation of Horse Racing Academies, which covers 32 countries. We meet four times a year in Abu Dhabi and we share best practice on global education and training in the horse racing industry. Um, today we're going to cover a little bit of equine body therapy which I've been uh, doing since I've been in uh, Busan and also be doing in Seoul. I have a couple of students here who are working in the stables that are, are currently training with me to learn this. And the reason why we do equine body therapy and the importance of it is is because the skin of the horse, it's the, it's the largest organ in their body. It's 16% of their actual body weight. And the skin has two main functions. One is to protect the body, and the other is to act as a sensory receptor, taking messages to the brain and back to areas of the body that need circulation or help. Um, under the skin of the horse, there's a, a lot of connective tissue which converts the stimulation of either pressure, temperature, or forms of red light into electrical impulses. And we'll do a short demonstration of the electrical energy that's around not just us, but also the horse in a minute. Thanks. So now, okay, how we start with this equine body therapy, it covers three lots of things. We're looking for one, indicators of where the injury or illness might be. Two, whether it's skeletal or muscular. And three, then we go to the areas that the horse has indicated to us where there may be a problem, and we treat that with either the red light or massage or muscle release, uh, one of the three. So these are the 13 indicators. And a horse's body cannot lie. They're, all these, on every horse, it doesn't matter, Shetland pony or a Clydesdale, these always are true. What this horse tells you when you put pressure on these points will indicate to you what area of the body is, is not well. So we always start at the 13 standard points. One is here at the atlas. The atlas is where the main neck bone meets the skull. So this is where the joining is. And this is an area of many, many acupuncture points. Around the horse's eye is really important. There's a couple of things before you do start trying to um, manipulate a horse for this type of therapy and one is it must be in a quiet environment because at the end of the therapy you want the horse to be totally relaxed so that his body can heal from all the stimulation that you've just done by the pressure. So on the horse's face this is a meeting point of many many meridians of acupuncture and Acupuncture is like, it's not Western medicine or anything, but the Chinese have done it for 500 years. So they've pretty much got it right. What they've done now is they've converted it into other animals, into different species. So we've now got a map of acupuncture points on the horse that tells us where to go to treat different in illnesses and injuries. So this horse here has many, many points around the eye. So when he gets a bit agitated, if you massage those points and pr put pressure on those points, he'll eventually start to calm down. His body will calm down. One thing you've got to remember when working with horses is a horse can feel your heartbeat or your pulse from 50 metres away. So if you walk into a paddock, the horse is 50 metres away and you're anxious, the horse will feel that and he'll run away. So when you work with the horse, never come in if you're frightened don't come in because the horse straight away will overpower you. You have to go in, lower your heart rate, be calm because when you lower your heart rate and you touch his points, the horse then also becomes calm. So the standard points we start with are at the atlas and that's where the head joins the body. Their, their head is very, very heavy and there's seven bones in the neck. They go from here to here and they're supported by quite large muscles which get very, very tired because these horses, race horses, they're equine athletes. They're an elite athlete, just like a football player, a soccer player that are going into a FIFA final. When these horses go to the races, that's their FIFA final, that's their grand final. So they have to be 
100% body tuned, body fit, muscles, ten muscles uh, supple, so that their skeleton can work to its optimum. So now with these lines, this one here, the indicator one, we just go down that in a sort of a crisscross manner because we know that many, many nerves meet here and the different reactions that we get from that will tell us whether he's sore somewhere. So he's sort of turning his head, he's turning his nose away. So that straight away is indicating to me that he's, he's got a problem somewhere. It'll, it'll skeletal, so it'll either be in front or behind. So like, as we go through the horse later on, he'll tell us where, where the problem is, whether it's a front end problem, whether it's a back end problem. So we already know we've got a reaction. We'll go back to that. On their bones here, we go over the top of the bones and we try and, as we go over the top of the bones, we're actually stimulating nerves. And those nerves will send a message to his brain. And then he'll react in a way, if, if I hit a point where somewhere in his body, it's, it's not right. This is front end. So, so far so good. Then we go underneath them. That's, that's pretty good. If he had a problem in his front end, he would react in a way like he would shake his head, he would turn it away from me. But he's, from here up, this horse is pretty good. Another thing is you'll notice when I stimulate some of these points, I like to look, keep an eye on his face because when they do things like lick their lips, yawn, they're actually releasing some endorphins because you've hit a point that circulation, that means a message has gone to his brain, it's coming back to that point and resetting. So we've gone over two, so that's the second one. All right, so he's got a little bit of skeletal pain somewhere. I don't know where yet, but it's not in the front end. Now we go down, this is his um, collar groove. You go down in three, you start at the top of the shoulder. The pressure that I'm using is, is a little bit as if you're putting um, butter on bread. It's not hard, but it's enough to go down the points to get some type of reaction. So I go down here, first stop, nothing. Second stop, nothing. If he had knees or joint problem, I would have had a reaction. Down here is now heading towards his, his back end. So he's not really reacting, but under my finger, I've got like warning. So he said, I've got a bit of, I've got a bit of bone pain and it's probably at the back. The fourth point here is that for teeth, down, right down here, this is all connected to his brain and this governs all this part of his head. So if I press this, and he, if his reaction is swanning his neck or he pulls back very hard, I know then he might have a problem with his teeth, but he doesn't. But I, I'll check anyway, so I always check their teeth because they have teeth all the way down here. And it's really important because that governs their whole digestion. So if I put my finger up along his cheek, not too bad. If he had very sharp teeth, I would have had a bad reaction. So I know all this end okay, teeth fine. The fifth one here is on the cheek. This, this point here just underneath the cheek governs the feet. So. If he had corns in his feet, or um, a problem with his feet, I would get a pretty severe reaction. So I just go underneath the, the cheek, and he's fine. So the sixth point is the shoulder, and this one's a pretty significant point because this will tell me if he's got any shoulder, shoulder problem, uh, foreleg problem. So you just do your cross, and then another cross. So, so when? Let's, let's start from five again. Okay. Okay. The the fifth indicator is is all along the cheek, just inside the cheek, governs his acupuncture points for his feet. Can indicate corns, um, 
nails through his feet, you know, if he's got any foot problem, the reaction here would be quite savage, but he's okay. The six point on his shoulder, I'm getting to that matey. He's trying to help me. So here, the six point is a massive shoulder muscle. Underneath that is his central nervous system. It goes in a crisscross like this. So to, it governs the shoulder and the foreleg down to here. Because the nerves go like that, we go in across and across. If he had any muscular pain up here, I would get a reaction, so he hasn't. So the seventh point is, is probably the main, main indicator points. We go over his shoulder and we fall into a little hole here at the back of his shoulder. In each horse it's a little bit different, might be up high, down low. That shoulder is the top of his very first rib. The horse has 19 ribs. So that's the first point. So I go to his last rib here and I feel for his last rib. That is another point. These are two very significant acupuncture points. And I know by knowing that there, if you watch this horse's face, when I stimulate that point, he will actually, look at his face. <laughs> so that is the point where I can stop and start him. That's his stop and start point. He can't bite you, he can't do anything. It's so powerful, this point. Okay, so we go back, we draw a line. Underneath here are the ribs. In between the ribs is ligaments, nerves, and connective tissue. Up here is his cervical. His spine is very, very important. I notice in Korea, many horses, each country that you'll find similar problems of all the horses in different countries. It, it, so it's an environmental thing. It could be the track condition, it could be the climate, you know, where bones degenerate faster than others. So in Korea I've found many horses have stiff shoulders and quite a little bit of uh, pressure over the back. We draw a bit of a line here between these, imagine these are his spine, like this. It's really important because here, his whole central nervous system goes along here. There's thousands and thousands of nerves. Those nerves connect this end to his brain. And they tell his brain to make this end and this end work together efficiently. So if there's anything blocking that, the message doesn't get through, things start to deteriorate. His shoulder might be bits. He might have a hard muscle here. Um, he might be a horse that won't go on the track, won't go in the barriers. There'll be a reason why. So you go in between these very gently. Each one has a different point. From here to here is in, in turn. This covers his heart, his lungs, his liver, his kidneys. Quite significant for horses that tie up muscle cramps. His spleen. This is the, this is the inside of the horse that, that um, when he digests his food, pulls the energy out and turns it into oxygen and uh, puts all the trace elements and that through his body. If his spleen is playing up, you don't need to give them any crazy medicine or anything. You simply need to stimulate that acupuncture point once or twice a day to restart that spleen because it's, it's pretty significant. From here back is the hind end. So we go through each one of these till we get a reaction. Now we know that this horse had a bit of an injury uh, in, a, in a race, he's a, he, but he went on and won the race because he's a very brave horse. But after the race, when he cooled down, he had a problem. So when we have a look, we get to the end of his rib cage, hip joint here, fingers across, we draw a triangle up to his spine. In the middle of that triangle is his individual master point. That's his master point there, and this is his master point here. Even if I don't know where he's injured, by stimulating these points, healing will begin. Because it's telling his brain, reset, reset. So he hasn't given me much indication here, but as I go up these points, I notice that 
this is where the acupuncture and the muscle release and and the massage come together not one will fix everything so a combination this here I'm getting significant movement of his muscles back here this here okay so I now know that it's behind his problems behind but I need to find where behind so then I go to the eighth point it's down his poverty line the poverty line on a horse his rumps like this we call it a poverty line because when a horse is uh, has, suffers from malnutrition that line becomes very deep so that's why it's called a poverty line fat horses have it thin horses have it but it's a significant line hey, 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 hey. Okay. okay point number eight is down down his poverty line here at the back of his rump there's a small indentation line we call it the poverty line because when a horse suffers from malnutrition that line becomes very deep all horses have it fat or thin horses but it's significant because it's a hollow line it it holds many many acupuncture points so I go down here I'm not getting much reaction here so his injury is not back here so now this has told me behind up high but not back here so here is his huge huge hip joint there's a it's the bone closest to the skin many many acupuncture points I think we're getting a little bit closer to his injury because I'm feeling already underneath he's not comfortable then we've got 10 here which is just below the hip joint and that's his that's where his pain is so you'll notice the horse is leaning in towards me when I pressure this point he has significant pain in his hip area so that's one up on top two three uh, twelve quite significant this is the number 13 is the most important this is the highest point of the horse and in Chinese it, Chinese language it's called bar high in um, acupuncture terms bar high means the highest point so you run two lines one is muscular and one is skeletal I'm getting a really significant reaction to muscular muscular and ligaments so now those 13 points have led me to this conclusion he's told me here there's something wrong with my bones down in here everything from here on is fine back here problem so I've ruled out here he's brought me back to here so this horse has a problem with his hips and his pelvis right up here and I think if I hit this point he'll probably kick me head off but and that I'm getting a really really harsh harsh reaction to this so here this horse's problem is here and the injury that he got in that race now he's starting to let go you can see now his back is starting to react so these little indicators here these are the points that I will hit with the torch so so those 13 points have told me that this horse got a problem behind and now with this is the acupuncture torch it's the same as the using the needles but it's non-invasive and it's with the use of a photonic light so what happens is we know where approximately his all his meridian points are so I go over the the main points that will help his injury so we always go back to the indicator points again for the first one one you only need five seconds of this because what's happening here this red light is penetrating his skin is penetrating the connective tissue and it's actually going to the cell of the meridian point the red light hits the cell and it turns the nucleus of the cell upside down so when it flips back over it's like restart so it's at the moment it's spinning this way when the red light hits the acupuncture point 
It's the same as chi when the needle comes out, it reverts the opposite way. So we'll settle this horse back down again when we do all these points. It's only five seconds. Five seconds. And he has hundreds of acupuncture points, but I'm only going on the points that this horse has told me where he saw. So these points, I'm, I want all these to reset, reset, reset. So when I massage him, I have his body, his body's full attention. And really, um, this type of this type of therapy, it's not rocket science. It's just listening to your horse and understanding how to keep an athlete at optimum fitness. So if I went if I went over every single one of these points with the torch, the horse would he would fall to sleep. But we don't really have time for that, so I'm just going to do the key points. Um, the most reactive is is between these ribs. If you're going to do the massage, you go up in between the ribs because you want to stimulate ev everything. And um. The reason why I liked, I've enjoyed doing this in Korea and showing some of the grooms how to do this is because it's something that when I go back, I know that the grooms will actually be able to do it, even with their fingers. Any acupuncture point is simply pressure. Remember at the start we said about the skin, connective tissue, pressure. We, we're using the red light because it just is faster. And you'll notice I'm just putting the lights on the numbers because that's his standard points. But we know he's got an injury up here. So long term treatment for this horse, I would come in and I would probably do all around his hips, the top of his pelvis, across. <coughs> They've got so, so many acupuncture points. So that's virtually just the nuts and bolts of a basic um, diagnosis with the standard points and using the torch. For the massage, which is probably the most important because the horse's body is massive, massive muscles and they have to carry this huge frame and they need their muscles to be so relaxed and the connective tissues to be smooth and have no dents or strains or anything. So there's four or five different, sorry, there's four or five different um, massage techniques. This horse, if a pre-race massage would be soft. You would just use the, your fingertips and you would go over each one of his large muscle groups because each time you pressure it, you, start, you send a message to his brain and he'll start to release. So we've nearly had enough of this horse being an alligator, but once we get to here, we'll nearly put him to sleep in a minute. So you go all over his muscle group. You just follow his bone structure. You go inside his, his shoulder. This massive muscle here comes down inside the shoulder, under here, and this is where we strap the saddle on. So we're asking a, a lot of this muscle. Up around the top of his shoulders. And now massaging these points along here, you'll notice now this horse will just completely come around to us. And not only that, <laughs> I mean, seriously, his face is telling you. He thinks that's pretty good. <laughs> because what's happening is, as I'm massaging him, 
I'm sending so many messages to his brain to say, relax. Because all the soreness he's got can't go away if he can't relax. And I've got a, this is the horse that after he's had a massage, he usually just has a lay down. He's saying that's pretty good. So the different muscles we use different techniques. So what if you just leave him for a minute? No, leave it off. Leave that lead off for a minute. I want to show him something. No, take it off. Off. Yeah. In the wild, when horses meet, you'll notice if you ever watch wild horses, they run up to one another and they'll sniff noses to, as an introduction. And if they accept one another, then they lean over and they scratch one another's wither. So this horse is so tuned into me now that all he wants to do is scratch my back because I'm scratching his. So if I turn around, he'll do that. He won't bite, he's not biting me. He simply wants to scratch my back. No, no, leave him. Oh. So that's an indicator that, right, he's completely in tune. And he's letting me take any energy from me to him. And that's acceptance. And I mean, what is he? He's a, he's a big stallion, probably weighs, what, 520 kilos? And, well, I'd like to say I'm 50 kilos, but that'd be a lie. But, <laughs> um, but he can't do anything, just with two fingers. He can't move this horse because that's his master point. I don't want to, I don't want to scratch you back anymore. Oh, all right, one more. It's pretty good, isn't it? Okay, finish. But he's now completely And he's letting his mind and everything relax and his body start to repair. I don't want to scratch your back anymore. Oh. Okay, enough, enough, enough. Oh. Okay, that's enough. No. So that's virtually what it is. It's equine body therapy. It's getting in tune with your horse. It's learning his body language. Learning some indicators that can help you find Koala. <laughs> he wants more. So if he plays up, I just go back to this spot and stop him again. So that's just one side of the horse. And um, that's probably all you need to see. It's not, like I said, it's not rocket science. It's using a combination of acupuncture, stimulating uh, Chinese acupuncture meridian points. It's understanding your indicators, where to find, your horse can't speak, but his body does speak. And then using your hands to help fix them because all their bones is connected by muscle and, and tissue the ligaments and everything. You can put bones back into place if you can manipulate the muscle and massage it. But if you, if you pull the bone out and you don't look after the muscle, it will just fall back out again. So that's it. Thank you. All right. Okay. We've gone over indicator points, 13 indicator points. We've gone over some basic um, Chinese meridians for acupuncture and we've also gone over massage. So these are the points for the front here. Bone. Underneath, his, underneath the bones of the neck. Down his collar groove. Indicator point. Teeth. Feet. Second part of the horse, the se seven points, vertebrae. In between the vertebrae, 
we have indicators for the heart, lung, liver, kidney, spleen, back half of the horse here, pelvis, hips, ribs in between the ribs, ligament, many, many points. For the back half of the horse, the main points we cover, hip joints, here, poverty groove, here, bar high. Chinese bar high means the highest point of the horse, the joining of 100 points. So this point here is the master point for all of his body, and it meets the brain. Furthest point, highest point. Okay. All right, there's many different types of massage and we do them for many reasons. We can do remedial massage for, for illness injury or we can do a pre-race massage which is before your horse goes to the races just make sure that all his body is uh, balanced, all his muscles are stretched like a, like a warm-up. After the, the post-race massage is much more aggressive. The pre-race massage is very soft. We only use just the top, tops of our fingers to just gently massage the horse's points. So we'll start with his head pre-race and we just want to massage and stimulate all the points around his face. He wants to eat me right now because he's hungry. So you just do it all around their head, around the ears. Because all around their ears, see here, there's many, many muscles and nerves. So you just gently stimulate that because that then starts to send relax to his brain. Then we go down the rest of his body, his neck, and we just feel that no tears in the muscle, no knots around his, around his collar groove again with our fingers. Draining here. Because these muscles, if he's going to the races today, they're going to have to pull him. When he gets tired, he's a big horse. All along his spine, make sure no areas. Oh, look out, here he comes again. Make sure no areas of pain. Good. And this big muscle here, this is his driver muscle. He needs this to push. They pull with the front, they push with the back. So you make sure this muscle has got nice movement, not stiff. Especially the hamstring. Massage all along his hamstring. All his major muscles. Most important is this one here comes down, the girth muscle here. At the end of the race, when the horse gets tired, this is, this is the muscle that will shorten stride and the horse will go slower. So you make sure this is stretched. Okay. Let's pull him just a bit. Come here. Why? So when you pick up his leg, You make sure you su always support support his foot, so always support his knee. Now I, I want this muscle here to be stretched right out. Hey, big boy. So I'm really slowly going to bring it out. All the way, all the way, until I feel his leg relax. At the moment it's not relaxed. But if you, if you have a look there at that muscle, that's the muscle he's going to need at the end of the race. And then always support his leg when you put it down. Feel good. So you go all over the horse. Start with his head, meridian points in the face, all along his neck meridian points, shoulder. You feel every large muscle group in this horse and make sure that he's ready to go. Because he's gonna need those muscles to be super, super supple, to stretch out. 
So if I could just get Sully, Sully, Sully. So since I've been here, there's been quite a few grooms that have, have um, come and actually done a little bit of massaging with me. So Sully's just showing a pre-race massage inside the shoulders, soft, soft up along his back, along his, this area here, gentle, gentle, up here. And you'll see he's using the tips of his fingers. And you'll also notice by watching the horse, if you keep your here, watch the horse's face, relax. Because by putting your hands on the horse, when he's starting to relax, you can actually feel that through your hands. Yep. Just remember he's a bit sore there. Just gentle. If this is just pre-race, gentle. So we're going up here. Yep. And if you, can you just drop the lead? You can see by his face, he's found a point on this horse that needed a massage. See, look at his face, Sully. Because remember, this horse had a hip injury and he's responding very well to this. Okay, now go forward again. Go forward to here, forward. forward forward okay so that that's the um okay thank you that's the pre-race massage now um, mr. Park will do the post-race massage which is a little bit more aggressive and it's more uh, he'll he'll when he touches the horse he'll use a little bit more force because he wants to push all the lactic acid build up out of the muscles so I'll hold him if you do you do him from here to here, like. No, yeah. Not too hard, just. Pretty boy. So the post race massage is a little bit more aggressive. Not too hard, not too hard. Okay. okay. And then along his back. Back, along his back, all along his back. Yep. Mm -mm. Go to the back. Yeah. Yeah. Ah. And notice as soon as he gets to the back, he stops all this. So what he's doing is his muscle release. He's draining, draining the lactic acid. What Sule did was preparation ma massage. Just be careful there, Bushma. <laughs> so I think you, you, you get a different idea. One was soft, one was hard. So, so Lee, do you want to come back? Come back. So, so these two, these my two students here. Uh. <laughs> he did the pre-race massage, and he showed you example of the post-race massage. So, it's not that difficult. We learnt this together in a, probably a week, and now these boys will look after their horses in Korea. Thank you. Good. Thank you.